This video will look at frequency histograms and bar charts, how they work, how to construct them and what to look for in them, how to interpret them. So here is a table we put together in the last video, um, a, a frequency table uh, detailing the heights of a various uh, group of people. And what I'm going to do is construct a uh, frequency histogram for this data. Now I could draw my axes here uh, freehand, but I would be setting a bad example because in the exam they want you to rule these lines. So what I'm talking about is these axes here. If I did them like that in the exam, I would lose a whole heap of marks because they do in fact want them to be dead straight. So in the exam, use a ruler. And if you don't have a ruler, uh, use something with a straight edge. So the side of your book or anything that you can do to make them as straight as possible. Just a little tip. And so here are some straight lines that I've drawn for my axes. Now what we put along the vertical axis here is either the frequency or the percentage frequency, depending on which one we've been asked to graph. And of course the graphs will look different because if I'm graphing this column, I, my points are 2, 1, 5, 6, 5, etc, etc. And if I'm graphing this one, my scale would be quite different because look, one of these goes up to 20, etc. So graphing the frequency and the percentage frequency is quite different. And I'll show you both versions, but let's start with the frequency. So that's what I would put along here frequency on my vertical axis and on the horizontal axis we would put the variable that we're graphing so in this case it's height now for my vertical scale this one the lowest is one and the highest is about six so I'm going to go from zero to about seven or eight along the vertical axis along here now again these should be even and uh, well measured using your ruler so I'm cheating a little bit by doing these ones freehand but in an exam uh, be careful to do those ones uh, evenly spaced apart yourself. Now my horizontal axis along here I'm going to put these uh, chunks. Because this is numerical data the uh, bar parts of my histogram are going to be touching each other. The walls of them are going to be touching each other. And because I've broken this up into chunks, each side of this interval is going to uh, be where my scale is. And let me just show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to start with uh, 145 as this starting point. And I've gone up by five. So then I'm going to have 150, 155, 160, etc. So there they are drawn out. And what I'm going to use to fill in the gap in between. So this space in between here is going to represent everything that fell in the range from 145 up to, but not including 150. So that was everything in this range here because we were measuring it in whole numbers. Remembering this is, this is continuous uh, numerical data. So I could have measured 149.99999 if I wanted to. But for this example, I've just used the, the whole numbers. So 145 up to uh, 149, etc, etc. So in this gap here, everything that fell in that range, 145 up to being less than 150, that goes in there. And then in this range here, between this line and this line, I have everything that fell from 150 up to, but not including, 155. And then in this gap here, I have whatever fell between 155 up to, but not including, 160. So that's how this scale along here works. And if you notice, it correlates with the way I set up my table. So now I'm just going to draw some of these bars. So the first one had a frequency of two. So between this point and this point, we had a frequency of two, which is here. So that's how wide this uh, bar part of the, of the histogram is. And I draw down to that line and we color it in. Now the next one there, I had a frequency of 1 for everything between 150 and 154, or rather up to 155. And that was a frequency of 1 for that distance there. So I colour them in. These don't need to be in different colours, by the way. I'm just doing it to, to help you visualise. And so 155 up to 159, we had a frequency of 5. So that's up here. And it's going to be the width of this point. Now again, this is where you would use your ruler in the exam and not do my terrible freehand example. It's another colour. And the next one there is 6. So that's that frequency. And 
and obviously they'd be colored in properly as well as opposed to my lazy version next one there 165 up and to not including 170 is this bracket here and that was a frequency of five and there they are completed. Now I should just note these should be all equal widths because I haven't measured this and I've done it freehand. This one here is looking particularly skinny. These should all be dead even widths because these points here are going to be dead even widths obviously because we will have measured it with a ruler. Uh, just something to watch out. And that is my frequency uh, histogram. So the important things to note about this are that these bars are touching. Uh, so this one and this one they line up these walls along here breaking this one up from this one that those lines are touching this line here they're touching all the way along and the reason that that's significant will be clear later because in a bar chart for categorical data they don't touch so for a frequency histogram like this where the data is continuous and they're they're bumping into each other ie 145 up to 150 like um, 149 is right next door then that's where they would be touching each other and also for continuous data like this, the measurement point along this horizontal axis is um, either side of the bar. So by that I mean because we're talking about a range, 185 up to but not including 190, then in between them is where we colour in the point, so along there. When we're doing discrete data, um, that's a bit different and I'll show you that one now.